Welcome to today's Partner Web Conferencing, Leveraging Azure IIS with Dynamics 365. And to kick us off today, we have Fabio Arujo. Fabio, you now have the floor. Uh, thank you, Doug. Hi, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us. And uh, thanks for joining this uh, Dynamics uh, webinar series. I'm Fabio Araujo, part of the Dynamics uh, SMC corporate space uh, here in uh, Microsoft uh, headquarters. Today, we'll present actually the final session in this webinar series. Uh, we've been covering a lot of ground since the beginning. We talked about the Dynamics 365 overview. We presented solutions about uh, uh, solutions that complement Dynamics 365, such as LinkedIn, Adobe, our entire Power Switch, uh, which was uh, amazing products complementing uh, our platform. We also had a session on licensing, pricing, and incentives, specifically uh, to partners. And then we went into the dynamics and how it works together with Azure. So a broad range of topics, and I hope you follow up on the recorded sessions that will be made available to everybody. Uh, so with the sessions, uh, we hope you will be able to understand and see the entire value proposition for Dynamics 365, our business solutions, the one Microsoft approach, and how to bring that to the market. Today, we will actually then cover how you can leverage the Azure IAS uh, with Dynamics 365. And just one more reminder before we continue. Next week, we will have the Dynamics Sales Blitz uh, on March 12th and 13th. So stay tuned because we're going to have more details related to the Sales Blitz in this uh, session today. So with that in mind, I would like to hand over and invite Barb to start her session. Thanks, everybody, and uh, happy selling. Thanks, Fabio. Welcome, everyone. This is Barb Barrowman, and I am going to be kicking us off today. And as Fabio mentioned, today we're going to be focused on, again, what partners can do uh, with Azure services to extend what you're doing in Dynamics 365. Uh, so last week we talked a little bit about Cortana Intelligence and some other Azure services, and we're going to continue on with that this week. We're going to be focused on today, I'm going to talk about exporting the Dynamics 365 database to an Azure SQL database. I'm also going to talk about connecting to external data sources um, and bringing that into Dynamics 365. Then I'm going to turn it over to Karen, and she's going to talk about doing your backups into Azure and how you can save attachments on Azure. And last, we're going to have Renato going to be speaking about the connected field services and how to do the Internet of Things with Azure and bringing that into Dynamics and also Azure Authentication. All right, so first I'm going to talk about exporting the Dynamics 365 database into a SQL Server that's in Azure. Um, so many times customers or partners need access to the data in Dynamics, but as you know, we don't allow access to the SQL database. So Data Export Service is an add-on solution that's available in AppSource, and this is for uh, only for the Dynamics 365 customer engagement online currently. And it's going to add the ability to replicate uh, the sales, service, and marketing data to a SQL database in a customer-owned Azure subscription. Now, using this service will help to simplify the, the technical and administrative complexity of deploying and managing a data export solution, and you'll be up and running in under an hour. Now, the data in the SQL database will be updated when it syncs with Dynamics. The first time, it'll do a full sync, and then um, it'll do up incremental updates, and so that will make it practically near real-time, which I'm going to show in my demo. And since it's syncing in near real-time, this is one of the reasons that partners and customers would maybe want to access the data from this SQL database. Uh, you could have your Power BI reports pull data from here to get a more real-time update. You can also aggregate data across multiple Dynamics environments. Um, you can limit the number of entities that you're exporting, so it's only going to be the data that you're interested in. And you could use the direct query functionality against this data if you'd like to use uh, that from a SQL environment. Um, since the query is happening on Azure, it's not anything that you would be impacting for your Dynamics tenant. 
Now, um, as I mentioned, it is a solution, so I'm going to walk quickly through what that uh, installation would look like. So first off, you need to find it on App Source. So you can see here, I've did a, done a quick search. And once you find it, you're going to click on the Get It Now button, which is going to kick off a wizard. Um, it's going to ask you for some information about who you are. You'll want to make sure that you're logged into the Dynamics tenant that you're going to be deploying out to, because it's going to pull in your uh, information to um, ease uh, as you are um, moving forward with the installation. Um, our next step, as you can see here, is you're going to be picking which instance of the Dynamics tenant that you actually want to install this solution onto. And then lastly, it's going to bring you right back into the Dynamics Administration Center, and you will see that the, uh, the solution is starting to be um, installed. We could see there's installation pending. So a very nice, easy wizard that will get you up and running in a very quick manner. I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop now. And again, I'm starting out here in App Source, so you can kind of see that. Again, um, here's the Get It Now button. You would just click on that to kick off the wizard um, to kind of walk you through those steps that I showed you, and that will get the solution installed on your Dynamics tenant. So what I'm going to be doing for this demonstration, I'm in my Dynamics tenant now, and I'm showing my accounts and the list of all of my account names. What I'm going to do is I've already set up the data export service so that I'm going out to a SQL database in Azure. And I'm going to make a change to this customer account and then show you how quickly that updates inside of the SQL system in Azure. So let's take a little bit more of a look at how we set this up. As I mentioned, I've already installed it. So when you go into settings, you will see that there's now this data export service that's available for you. I've already set up our data export pro profile. So let's see what that looks like. Um, pretty much you're going to be setting up a name. And then you need to have the Key Vault URL. Those are the main things that you're going to need to get this set up. We do have a PowerShell script that you can fill in the information that you get from the SQL database that you're setting up in Azure, like you'll need the resource group name um, and information from your Dynamics tenant. You can fill this into this, uh, this PowerShell script and run that, and that will get you your Key Vault URL that you're going to need to put here. The other thing you can do um, is set up the entities that you want to send over to the SQL database. Um, here we have set up that I'm just going to be sending over the account tables. But you could certainly select multiple different profiles, and you can make sure that you can select multiple entities or just one entity per profile. Again, whatever you need to make sure that that data is in the most usable fashion for you. All right, so now let's go over into Azure. So I'm in my Azure portal, and this is the SQL database that we have created to sync with um, the data export service. You would just click plus to create a new resource, uh, type in SQL database. You're going to do the standard setups you need for all of your Azure resources. You need your resource group, uh, what location you want it to be in which subscription it's going to be going to. You can select if you want it to be a part of the Elastic Database Pool. We did not do that for this demo. And then you can just select a blank database. Again, the reason for this solution that takes that, um, you do not have to recreate the schema and all the tables. That is done for you with the, with the uh, data export solution. So that's what's going to help you out. All right, so I did a quick query on this data already, and I've pulled in all the names of my account. So this should match up what we are seeing inside of the Dynamics tenant. So let's go over to our accounts here. And let's make a change. I'm going to remove the word sample from City Power and Light, and I'm going to go ahead and save that. 
Uh, if you noticed here, I've uh, turned on editable grid so that I'm able to easily change the name of the account uh, while I'm sitting in the subgrid format. Let's go back over to our SQL database here, and I'm going to click Run. And you can see now we've uh, removed the word sample from City Power and Light. Um, so really quick uh, database uh, synchronization between the two. Um, so again, create a SQL database inside of Azure, um, implement uh, or install the data export solution inside of um, Dynamics, and then create, um, create that connection between the two and you'll be up and running. All right, let me switch back over to my presentation. So the next thing I was going to talk about is virtual entities. Uh, so virtual entities were announced with the July update version 9.0. And virtual entities allow you to read data from an external source. So in my demo, I have created um, a database, a SQL database inside of Azure. And it's going to store um, e-commerce data. So something that would maybe not be residing normally in Dynamics 365, uh, but would be would nice to have surface up in Dynamics so that I could see some of the orders that are coming through my, for my customers. Now, when uh, how the virtual entities work is the data is not actually stored inside of the Dynamics 365 database, but rather it's a point it's a pointer to a new data source, and data source is something new uh, that we've set up for virtual entities. And um, then you also need to have a um, OData connection for that data. So we set it up, uh, we set up a web service inside of Azure that's going to surface that data up um, uh, in an OData v4 connection, and that also resides in Azure. So those are a couple of the services that, that we're showcasing with this solution. The data... The data is going to look just like um, a regular um, regular data for the end users. And um, I'm going to show here kind of a little bit of the setup from the screens. Again, you're going to select that it's a virtual entity. We're going to select that uh, new data source, which we call e-commerce. And again, this data is going to surface up inside of Dynamics, just like regular data uh, that the end user would see. Uh, you can set up forms, um, just like you would uh, for any other entity. All right, so let me switch back over to my desktop. So I'm going to start out here in my Azure portal. And I'm going to log into my SQL Server here. And again, we call this Contoso e-commerce. And I've decided to log into it now because it does uh, it kicked me out a couple of times. So if you're doing uh, this same demo, you might want to do the same thing. I found it easier to log in while I'm talking to you guys about the solution rather than finding out I had lost my connection. So again, this is a uh, e-commerce database that we set up. We have the name of all of the orders. We have some information about the orders. And we have um, the status of the orders. So this would be information that we're going to try and surface up inside of Dynamics. So let's go over to Dynamics. And we can see here, this is going to be my my e-commerce orders. So if I click on here, uh, this is the new entity that I created called e-commerce orders. Again, this data is going to look pretty standard, um, just like any other data that we'd have surfaced up. We can click on it, and we can go into uh, the information, just like we would with ready, every other order. We can uh, filter the order, and we can sort it. So it reacts just like regular data that we would see um, inside of that. But again, really, it's just a pointer at this point. When I request this information, it's going outside of Dynamics to uh, the Azure SQL database and get, grabbing the information from there. So let's show how that works. 
All right, so let's change order 42808. Let's make that $3,000. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's go back into my dynamic system and refresh that. And our first order, 42808, has changed over to $3,000. So again, a very quick update because it is pointed to that SQL server. It is just going out and checking that information. So let's walk through again how we set that up. So the first thing we did was we need to... Um, uh, set up our virtual uh, entity data source. So I am in settings and in administration, and we have our um, a new entity down here, or a new setting called virtual entity data sources. We already have this set up for our data already, so you can see we have this e-commerce data source that we have set up. And if we clicked on New here, we just need to um, do the name and the URL. And again, the URL is pointing to that web app service that I have set up in Azure that, again, is surfacing up that data in SQL in an OData v4 format because that's how Dynamics needs to receive it. The next thing I want to show is setting up the actual virtual entity. So I'm in settings and customization and customize the system. And I'm going to pull up my entities. And we now can see that I have my e-commerce order entity. This is the uh, custom entity that we had set up for this. And notice here I have selected, I have checkmarked uh, the check mark the box for the virtual entity. Once you check that, you will need to fill out the data source. And again, uh, we have e-commerce as the data source. That is that new uh, data source that I just showed you how we set up. All right, so let's uh, recap on that. So there's four steps to setting up the virtual entities. Step one, you need to understand where that data resides that you want to query inside of Dynamics. For us, it was the SQL database inside of, uh, uh, in, out in uh, Azure. Step two, you need to expose that data as OData v4, and we use the web app uh, that was, again, residing in Azure. And step three, you need to create that data source in Dynamics, which we did, which was our e-commerce data source. And then we have that URL that's pointing to our web app. And then step four, you need to create that new identity that new entity in Dynamics, and again, select that virtual entity checkbox, and select the data source that you just created. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Karen. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Barb. I'm just going to grab control here and share out my desktop, so please just let me know uh, when you can see that. Everyone see that okay? I can yep, see I it. Can. Yay. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to cover two things today, really cover two demos. Um, and these are really showing um, how you can kind of extend Dynamics by using some of the Azure storage services. And we'll actually use the blob storage within Azure to do two things. One, to store backups, and then also store um, attachments. So let's start with, with saving backups. Just a couple things here. So um, again, we, um, we can save save our backups to Azure using the Azure Blob Storage. And in this demo, um, to actually do this, um, this functionality isn't available in the Dynamics Admin UI at this time, but it's something we expect in the future. But I'll show you how um, you can actually automate this backup by using PowerShell. And because we don't have um, the, the backup in the UI, you could either use um, something like PowerShell or you could take advantage of the Dynamics Management API and use other tools that could make web services requests to that API to actually make this, um, save this backup to 
um, to Azure. So there's a little bit of extra work, but again, um, PowerShell is a great way to do that. Um, within PowerShell, there's a module that allows, allows you to access dynamic admin capabilities, and it includes the backup capability, which I'll show you, and then also um, that Power, PowerShell module can do other things, other administrative tasks within uh, Dynamics as well. You can see here, um, there's some benefits to, to storing backups. And the biggest one is the top one you see there, optimizing your dynamic storage. You have a certain set amount of, of storage in your dynamics database. If you're saving and making a bunch of backups, you're, you're generally using that storage. So if you could offload that to Azure, that could save and allow you to grow your dynamics environment. Um, some other things, um, you know, it'll allow you to generate some Azure consumption. You can gain maybe some better control over your backup data and then e even maybe do some easier restoration of those um, backups from Azure into to other SQL databases. So let's go ahead and show you um, how we can do that. So the first thing we have here is um, when we're doing backups, we're in the Dynamics Admin Console here, we generally go to the Backup and Restore tab. And you can see we have three different backups here. You can see that these are stored on Dynamics 365, so they're using our database. If we want to um, execute a new backup, I could cl click on New Backup here. But notice there's no option, right, to save that to um, to Azure. So when, if I executed on this backup, it would just save it within um, Dynamics 365. So um, let's go ahead and show you how we can um, execute some commands within a PowerShell script to actually uh, create this backup uh, within Azure. So I'm just going to switch here. And I've got a PowerShell command up here. And I actually have my script right next to it, just in OneNote. And I'm going to do some cut, cutting and pasting. One thing I want to mention is when you open PowerShell, you notice right at the top, this is opened um, as administrator. So um, when you open PowerShell, if you right click on it, you could say uh, run as administrator. It's important to do that so all these commands run appropriately for you. So I'm just going to grab this first option here. And what I'm doing here with um, kind of these dollar sign is I'm creating variables to hold some information. So the get credential is actually, you can see here, it's prompting me for credentials. It's going to hold the credentials um, that I need in order to log into my Dynamics tenant. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in. And we're using uh, Renato's tenant here for this demo. And hopefully I can get the password right on the first try. OK. OK. So that's the first step. The second step right here is that I need to tell um, PowerShell um, I need to give it the URL to map to the, the Dynamics Management API. So that's the command that I'm sending here. The admin um, that services that CRM Dynamics. That's the management API uh, that you can access to, to execute things. The next thing I'm going to do is is import the module. So I talked about this Microsoft .xm XRM.online management API, that's actually the PowerShell module that allows you to execute um, administrative commands against your Dynamics tenant. So that's the module that we need to load. The next thing we're going to do here is is establish this GUID. And this GUID is actually um, the GUID of our the tenant or, or the instance that we want to back up. So I'm going to click enter, but then I'm also going to come back and show you that that GUID is, comes from, if I go into settings, customization, and developer resources, um, this is the ID of this basic tenant. So that um, is the GUID information that I'm providing over here um, within my script. The next thing we need to do is to tell uh, PowerShell where to save this to. So this uh, this command here has all of the information about um, where to store that backup. So we can see information um, about we, um, where to store it, um, 
D365 backup is actually the um, the blob storage place where we're going to put this. Um, we can see this long key here. That's the, the secure key so that when uh, PowerShell is connecting to Dynamics, Dynamics can connect to Azure securely when it's saving that backup. And then we're saving it to this Contoso 365 blob blob um, storage place. So I'll show you that um, once we get this backup kicked off. The next thing is, is um, just a few more commands to establish um, uh, some Azure credentials. We're going to actually name the backup PS Backup. PS Notes will actually um, be a description. We could make that a little more but descriptive if we want to, but we'll just call it PS Notes. So again, we've established all of this information, and now we're going to actually execute the backup CRM instance command that's part of um, this PowerShell module. So we're going to kick that off, and that's going to kick off our backup and use all the information and credentials uh, that we established up here. So let's go ahead. Um, so that completed. Let's go ahead and go back to our... Dynamics 365 admin portal, and I'm just going to do a quick re refresh here. And there we go. We can see there's our PS backup that started, and it's creating. And you can see that it's going to be stored on Azure Storage. So we've kicked that job off. Um, this is going to take a little bit of time to finish, so I'll come back um, after our second demo, and we'll show you what that, that uh, looks like. So let me flip back quickly here to my slides. So the next thing we're going to show is the ability to um, save attachments on Azure. And there's, um, much like the solution Barb talked about, um, there's a solution available on AppSource to do this. So we've installed this in our tenant, but I'll show you that. Um, you'll have to configure some things. So once we have that installed, we'll have to configure um, that service to point to the Azure Blob Storage location, much like we did with our backup. We'll enable which entities we want, the attachments stored in Azure. Um, we can save either notes or emails attach attachments, and I'll show you how to configure that. I mean, again, the biggest benefit here is being able to optimize your dynamic storage. So you're offloading um, attachments um, out of your database um, onto Azure. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So, let's see, the first thing here, um, here is um, AppSource, and this solution is called the um, Attachment Management. You can see it's, it's created by Microsoft Labs. So this is the solution. You need to be logged into the tenant. Much like Barb said, if I hit Get It Now, it's going to um, go ahead and execute and install this on my tenant. I've already done that. So let me go ahead and go, let's see, I want to go right here. Let me show you what it looks like once it's installed. So once I install this, it'll put this Azure attachment storage in my sitemap, and I have three options. I have the Azure blob storage setup, I have the note attachments, entities, and reports. So let's take a look at each of these. So here, I need to tell Dynamics where to store those uh, attachments in Azure. So again, I'm using the same storage account, this Contoso 365 blob that I was using for my backups. Um, I've got my secure SaaS token here so that I can make a secure connection between Dynamics and Azure. Um, here's the containers, the DS 365 blob container for my notes attachments and the D365 blob email container for my email attachments. So I have two different containers and I'll show you that when I when I show you Azure. But this is all it takes um, to set this up. Once that is done, um, I can select which entities I want the notes attachments saved into Azure. So in our case here, I've got account selected. You can see I've got the list of all my entities in the system. So I can have other, you know, if I'm attaching notes with attachments to other entities like opportunities or leads, I can set those up. But I'm just going to um, set this up with the account entity.
The last thing here is you could see some um, usage metrics. So if I open this up, I could see all the attachments that are in CRM, and then I could see the attachments that have been moved from CRM to Azure. And the reason there's a difference in, in these numbers is that this particular Azure attachment um, wasn't configured when I was attaching a bunch of notes and email attachments. So once I installed that, the notes and email attachments started saving into Azure, and that's why you see the, the number of differences here. But this allows you to kind of keep, keep tabs on, on how many attachments are over. So that's all it takes, really, to set this up. But what about the user experience? Is the user going to see anything different? Well, let's go ahead, and um, I'm in my list of accounts here, and I'm going to go to um, Azure, I'm going to go into AdventureWorks account, I'm going to just go into my notes, and as an example, I'm just going to attach a note with, with an attachment. So I'm going to create a new note here. I'm going to call that note Surface PC, and I've just got a, a very basic uh, JPEG here of a Surface computer that I'm going to attach. So there you go. I've attached um, that to this note, and I've attached the JPEG. So that's all that happens. The, the user will know no difference. They, they won't know that this Surface JPEG is actually getting saved to Azure, not in Dynamics. The user sees no difference. So what do we see on the, on the Azure side? So here I am in my Azure portal, and I'm looking at my Contoso 365 blob. So this is my blob storage. And you can see I have my D365 backup, that where my backup's going to go, I have my and I have my two different blob containers for my notes attachments and email attachments. If I open this up, I can see that I have some different attachments here, and I can see the one right here, the Surface JPEG that was just saved. So that quickly, when I uh, attach that JPEG to a note, it saved it into Azure. Notice that um, right here, um, it, it it's appending the GUID of the account, and then it'll append that to the name of the file. So this information here, because I have selected set up um, the notes attachments for the account entity, it'll use that GUID from AdventureWorks and append that to the beginning of this. I get, if I click on this file, let me just show you that it is indeed, um, I'll just open it up here. It's just a very simple JPEG that I can access right there from within the Azure portal. So there you go. That's all it, it really takes um, to, to set up and save attachments. Um, you need to, again, point, um, set up, um, install the app source solution. You need to set it up to point it to the right spot in Azure. And then you need to select the entities, and it will start saving, saving those attachments um, into to your Azure. So now let's go back and see what happened with my backup. So I'm going to come back to my admin console here. And I'm going to do a quick uh, refresh. And notice um, my backup is done, and it says copy to Azure succeeded. So that's awesome because um, it completed my backup, and it saved it to Azure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on D365 backup because this is the location where I'm saving my backups. And look at here's the backups that were created, a full is created, and then a bunch of incrementals. And these are just your basic SQL backup files. But notice these just this just happened you know, over the last few minutes while I was doing the other demo. So again, um, in it, we used a PowerShell script. Um, we, and we used the um, Dynamics admin module that's part of PowerShell to execute this backup. And within that, PowerShell script, we told, really told the backup, um, to, we said Dynamics, kick off this backup and save this backup to this Contoso 365 blob storage in the D365 backup container. So that happened automatically for us. So that's all there is to it. Um, with that, I'll pass it off to Renato to um, take us um, into our next two, two demos today. Renato? All right, thank All you, yours. Karen. Yep. Uh, so let me share my screen here really quick. If you can, please confirm you can see it. Just wait for it.
I can see it. Looks great. Awesome. All right. So for, uh, for our first demo, my first demo here, I'm going to talk about uh, Azure IoT and connected food service scenarios. If you uh, remember uh, what we uh, presented on our first session uh, around food services, Dynamics 365 for food services is one of the Dynamics 365 apps that allows you to uh, manage your uh, field team and assign uh, work orders to, to your uh, field engineers so they can go uh, to their uh, customer site and, and provide some uh, sort of services. Uh, with the, the connected food service scenario, you can go one step further and be proactive. And if you provide services to uh, products or solutions that can um, connect to the cloud and send information over to Azure, we can um, get all that information, send over to, to Dynamics, apply some intelligence to it, and then uh, decide what to do next. Uh, I, I'm just going to pause here for a second. Can you guys confirm that you can still see my screen? I don't see anything right now. I'm just seeing a blank. Yeah, blank I'm not screen. seeing it either. Yep. Okay, so just let me pause here for a second and share that. All right, let's give it one more try. It's looking better from my side here now. And we have success. All right. So I'll just wait one second to see it on Event Builder to make sure everybody's getting that. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so as uh, I was saying before, the, the whole idea with connected field service is that you can uh, become a more proactive uh, service uh, company by monitoring uh, information that's coming from uh, all kinds of device, uh, let's say thermostats, uh, pipelines, uh, elevators, whatever. They will send this information uh, to the cloud, and once it's on Azure, Azure can uh, understand what's going on, filter that information, decide what to do next, and if it's uh, relevant to take an action, it can route this information to Dynamics. Once on Dynamics, all uh, Dynamics business process flow and capabilities can be leveraged. So you can have uh, automation on top of that to decide uh, to s dispatch someone to the field, or you can just uh, present as an alarm and, and let someone take some action there. So let's uh, go ahead and show you uh, how it looks like. Once you install the solution, I'll show you how to do that, where to get it. Uh, but when you install from AppSource the Connected Field Service solution, it install all components you need inside Dynamics, also inside Azure, and it comes with a, a simulator uh, page which uh, simulates uh, a thermostat in which you can uh, chain and play with the humidity or temperature. And the rules that I, I have inside Azure says that if my temperature goes uh, above 70 degrees, uh, it's an uh, unusual situation, it's not okay, and an alarm should be created inside Dynamics. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to change this uh, to 104, and we can see down here that uh, the device is reporting the temperature at 65, and now we change it, and it's going to start reporting the temperature at 104. So uh, this information uh, is being sent to Azure, and Azure is saying, okay, it's 104, it's uh, above my threshold, so I need to push this data to Dynamics. So I'm going to uh, switch tabs to Dynamics here. Let me refresh my dashboards here. And what we're going to, to see is that our, oops, sorry, I double click it here. We have here an alarm that the temperature is a uh, reading of uh, 104, and that's uh, above the, the threshold of 70. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just uh, open this uh, alarm, so we can see that uh, it initiated a business process flow. I have the data that uh, is 
being provided by the, the device. So I have the temperature, the reading, the, the ID, and because I have the device ID, it's registered on Dynamics and Azure, uh, I can see uh, where this thermostat is, uh, who's the customer, and I also can see on this real-time Power BI report that the uh, temperature elevated from uh, the, the initial 65 to 104, and my threshold is 70. So I can see what's going on here in real time. I can have like a, a, a SLA to resolve it. And so what I'm going to do next as the, the support agent here, say, okay, so I'll just create a work order and send someone to check on that. And what I can note here is that Dynamics is telling me here, oh, look, before doing that, don't you want to make sure you're testing the device first? Maybe you can just send a reset and make sure it's not a malfunction on the device. Yeah, 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 sure. Let's not dispatch someone there. I mean, it's cost, uh, a necessary cost, so let's just reboot the device. And I'll just say, okay, let's uh, reboot the device. The, the SLA was paused. And I'll switch tabs back to the thermostat screen. And what's going to happen is that uh, Dynamics is sending this reboot command to Azure. Azure is forwarding this uh, rebooting uh, command to the device and asking the device to, to reboot itself. So what happened here is that device was reset to 65 degrees. But let's say it's not uh, just a glitch or a small malfunction. It's really, uh, the, the reading is really incorrect and the device goes back to uh, a temperature that's above the, the threshold. What's going to happen is the same thing. It's going to be report to Azure and then back to Dynamics. So if we go uh, back to Dynamics, let me just move here to my IoT alerts. Uh, we're going to get the, the alert here, but I want to highlight here that uh, we have a background uh, process that uh, understand that you're getting multiple uh, reports for the same device for the same uh, at the same time for the same situation and we can group them together so you uh, you can see what happened over time for that specific device so let me refresh here and we have the new uh, information and now that I know that it, it is uh, I can see the curve here what's going on I know that it is indeed a pro uh, problem what I'm going to do is say okay I want to create a work order and send someone to the to check on that. So I'll, I'll just save. And what's going to happen is that uh, Dynamics will automatically uh, create this work order for us. So let me just go there and check on that work order. And there you go, you have the work order 121. If uh, I pop it open, uh, I'll see that uh, it's a work order for an emergency situation that requires an inspection for this specific customer uh, regarding a thermostat that is broken. It's ready for dispatch. Uh, it should take two hours to fix it. Uh, I can see the, that the tasks that should be performed once the, the field engineer is there, how long you, we expect this to take. It, the products that must be, uh, be taken to the, to the site so the, the technician can perform the activity there. Also, uh, the address and all required information to perform this job. Uh, because it, this is field service, I could uh, just schedule the work order using my assistant or the dashboard. There are multiple ways of doing that. But for today's demonstration, what I did uh, additionally is I created a Power, a Power Apps app that connects to Dynamics. And what it does, if I just refresh here, it's connected to Dynamics database, looking for uh, working orders. And remember, because this is a Power App, I, I could have it running on my mobile device, my cell phone, my tablet. And I see that there is a new uh, work order for me here as a field engineer. I can open it and say, OK, so I have uh, this reading uh, at this address, this city. It's an emergency. Yeah, I have all the information that I need here. So I, I'll just accept that and once we accept uh, and I let me refresh here we'll be able to see that this uh, it, the instruction will, uh, was updated to uh, dispatch it I can I'll be able to see the same information inside dynamics 
And after some time, because the information is being updated inside, and I'm saying that the, the technician accepted the job and it's going to the site, uh, this information will be passed along to Azure, and Azure will uh, send this information back to the device. So if your device has a uh, capability to, to receive message, we could, uh, for example, show on the on the thermostat display saying, okay, we are aware that something's not right with this uh, thermostat, and we are sending someone uh, to to check on that. And and this is it's really cool because you can act in a, such a proactive way that uh, probably you will uh, get there and, and and work on that problem on that issue maybe before the customer even realize that uh, something is going wrong there. So let me just refresh here to show the, the dispatch order was sent. And eventually we'll get the, our message being sent back here. I could manually uh, also do that if I, if I want for any thermostat, for any alert, I can just create my manual commands. And I could, for example, create different commands to uh, send notifications or reboot or whatever. So uh, we can automate that or just do it uh, manually and you see it getting here in a second. All right, so how do we get this solution installed? Essentially, all you have to do is go to App Source. Once you're there, search for Connected Field Service add-on. There is no uh, cost to install it. Uh, once you you go through the steps uh, from Get It Now, it will create a the, the, it, it will install the solution inside Dynamics, but you're also going to need uh, a Azure subscription, so it can uh, add all the components there. What components are going to be added to Azure? Uh, so let me go here to my Azure. All these components are going to be installed for you, and what they uh, essentially what they are is we have uh, the simulator page, that thermostat simulator page that I showed, uh, with a service plan to that, and then the the most important piece here is the IoT hub, where all your IoT device will be registered, and once this IoT Hub re receives a message, this message is going to be processed by a stream analytic job, and you have two stream analytic jobs, one that will uh, get this message and, and send this to, uh, to the database that will connect to Power BI, so you can have that uh, real-time Power BI dashboard inside the form that I showed you. And the other stream analytic job will uh, send this uh, information to a queue, and this queue will be processed by a logic app. So let me very quick show this logic app here. Let it load. And it's really straightforward what this logic app is doing. You can change that uh, if you need. Uh, it's just get the information from the queue and, and process the IoT message and if depending on the message it, uh, and the rules that you have in place, we'll create a new record inside Dynamics. So if, uh, if it's above the, the threshold, if you haven't created yet, it will create a new uh, record. Otherwise, it, it won't happen. So you, you can have all your logic here. And you have a second logic app that does the opposite uh, direction. It will get the information from Dynamics and send it to the IoT device. And that's how we send this reboot command over to the IoT device, All right? Okay, so with that, let me move to our final uh, demo of the day, which is uh, I'm going to talk about Azure Authentication. So uh, what, when you're creating uh, your uh, custom app, maybe a web page or a, a service that requires access to Dynamics, one question is, is always how to authenticate, how to connect to Dynamics, uh, and one issue that comes, uh, that raised is the, uh, I don't want to keep username and password. How, how can I connect to Dynamics with, without leveraging username and password authentication? So the way to do that is to uh, leverage Azure S2S or server-to-server -server authentication. 
Uh, what Serve to Serve does is you can register your app on Azure AD and it will create an ID for your uh, application ID for your app and then you can use that application ID to create a specific user inside an AMS call application user an application user will receive, will, will be assigned uh, a security role, so it, it behaves just like any other uh, user, except that an application user has no access to the UI, it's only for integration. And the most important uh, part here, there is no uh, need for a license to an application user. Important to mention, that if you create like a, a web app that gets information, that uh, retrieves information from inside an AMPS and, and, and present this for a user, if this user is your employee, although you don't need a license for the integration itself, your user, your employee is consuming dynamic data, is consuming the dynamic service, and it still requires a license as described on the license guide. This is called multiplexing. But for integ the, the integration itself, there is no need for, for a license. So let me uh, quick show you how to do that. Uh, so let me go come here. So uh, the first step is once you have your application developed, any kind of application, all you have to do is go to your AD, Azure Active Directory, go uh, to your enterprise applications, from there, you can see all your uh, all applications, go to all applications, and you'll be able to create a new app. I already have my app here. So once you add a new app, you get this application ID, and you can create uh, a secret uh, under permissions. And so all you have to do is to get this application ID, make sure you assign Dynamics 365 uh, permissions, to, to this application. Then you go to Dynamics under Settings and Security, change your view to Application User, and from here can create a new application user. I'll just open the one I already have here. And just add the application ID to this user and save and you get back these other two IDs from Azure saying that your application uh, was mapped to this user. Once you have it, just go on manage roles and, and say what this user can do on the solution. And how you use that, uh, so you just, once you create your application, and in this case, I'm, I'm going to use a very, very simple application. I I'm, don't expect you to be developers. Well, all I want to show you is that what I'm doing here is I'm connecting to Office 365 uh, login services and requiring uh, and validate my credentials. But my credentials here are the app ID. I don't have a need for username and password. I don't need to store and manage that. And once I have my credentials, okay, I'm connecting to my uh, CRM and asking for all my opportunities. So this, so, so let me run this app and bring this up here. Oops. And it will uh, connect through Azure and retrieve all my opportunities from there. Uh, the only thing that's necessary here is that the first time you, you run your app, the a tenant admin, your customer tenant admin, needs to give permission to this app to run. So it will pop up uh, a screen saying, okay, do you uh, authorize this app to consume this specific service? And you say yes, and then you'll be able to use that from, from that moment on. So this is a very uh, simple uh, app. I'm not interested in the app itself. All I want to show you is that it, it made a, a REST API call with all and brought all the opportunity details, all the important information from that uh, CRM tenant, and did that without the requirements of keeping a username and password. And that's exactly what we need for this integration. All right. So with that, I finished my last demo. Uh, we are going, if not yet, we are going to share all this research with you on, on the IM screen, and, the, uh, and this deck will be available for you as well later on on DLP. You have links to 
access uh, with, uh, step by step information on how to perform the same demos that we did here, how to create the environment and the configurations for all these services and apps. And with that, we conclude our uh, webinar series. I hope you have enjoyed, and thank you for being with us through, uh, throughout this uh, entire series. All these sessions will be available for you on DLP along with the presentations, the decks, and also you can use the same link that you use to connect to the session to uh, watch it on demand. Next week, we have the Dynamics 5 Spring Sales Blitz in, on March uh, 12th and 13th two different time uh, zones for, for, to cover the whole globe. Register now, you're gonna get the link on the IM screen as well, and, and so you uh, learn more about what's coming with the new release. Also, we're gonna have next Tuesday as well, uh, our March community call, this is for uh, US partners, but it's open for everybody. And we're gonna talk about blockchain and how blockchain uh, relates to Dynamics 365. And with that, uh, I thank you all for, for being with us today, and I hand back to Doug for some final announcements. Thank you very much, and we do hope that you found today's information helpful. If you enjoyed the web conference or have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, please let us know by completing our survey. It can be found on the Messages tab, and is on a scale of 5 to 1, with 5 being the highest score possible. And this does conclude today's web conference.